going to go through and create a little dog character now. Um, this process is a little bit involved, so this video might take a little bit of time, but by the time we've uh, finished the video, you should be able to model up something like this. Um, it's not really as straightforward as some of the earlier videos that we've had, um, because uh, there's some tricks that we need to know about as we think about the anatomy of the animal. But if you have a look at the uh, dog character that I've got here, uh, you can see that um, I've used two reference images, one that's a side image and one that's a front image. Um, and you'll be able to download these from the unit website. All right, so let's get started with this uh, modeling this dog character. I'm just gonna go up here and say file, uh, new scene. And that will just clear everything out. Um, and I'm going to close my outliner down so I've got a little bit more screen real estate here. Okay, so the first thing we want to do when we're setting up to model a 3D character is to use some reference images. The reason that we want to use reference images is because otherwise we're just trying to make stuff up in our heads as we model. And you can do that, but it's more effective if you have some um, designed background images to work with as reference. So let's bring them in. We're going to go into our um, for view at this point. So click over here and then we're going to go into uh, look at our uh, front view and our side view. We're not going to worry about our top view too much because usually when we're using a reference image we only use two. So to load in a reference image you can use this little um, button here. If you just click on it it'll uh, pop up a window and you can choose an image. Now I've got two images that I saved earlier. Um, one's a front image and one's a side image. When you make these images, when you make these images here, it's really important that um, you align them carefully so that the center line of this image is centered within this uh, overall, the overall image itself and um, the midline here again is centered so that you've got the same distance. Also you should ensure that the tops of the model on the front view line up with the top of the model on the side view. So in this case we'd be looking to make sure the tops of the ears match the tops of the ears over here. Also we'd be looking to make sure that the bottom of the feet match the bottom of the feet over here. And you can do that in Photoshop or any other imaging, image editing software. Okay, so uh, let's load in our front dog. Okay, and you can see that that image just appears there like that. And you can see that from our side view, we can just see this line here, which just represents this image seen from the side. So let's, in our side view here, load in our side image, so dog side. Okay, and just zooming in a bit there to make them fit a bit. Okay, now if you have a look in your 3D view here, you'll see that you'll have something like this set up. Um, that's fine and works fine for us when we're actually doing our um, side views, but it's a little bit better because we're going to be modeling in this middle space here. We don't want these planes getting in the way. So there's a couple of things that we want to do. The first thing we want to do is we want to take each plane and using our move tool, we just want to move them right back and out of the way. You'll notice that as we move them back on those axes, so I'm just moving this one back along the um, x-axis at the moment, you can see it doesn't actually change um, the side view because these are orthographic views, so things don't get smaller as they get further away. So we can just move them out of the way. It doesn't really matter how far back we move them. Okay, so once we've got them moved out of the way, the other thing we want to do is make it so that we can't accidentally click on them and move them while we're modeling, because that will make selecting our model bits harder. You can imagine that as we're trying to model in here, we'll be constantly accidentally clicking this image. So to fix that, we need to kind of freeze these images. And the way to do that in, in Maya is to come down here to your layers panel and just click this plus button here, and that will create a new layer. Now what we need to do is we need to move our, um, our background images into that layer. So the way you do it is you select the background image and then you go down to your layer over here and you right click on it and say sele add selected objects. Then you click on this one over here and do that again, add selected objects. Now you can, ask, you can um, be sure that they've been added to your layer just by toggling this V button here on and off. And when you toggle it off, this is the visibility button of the layer. And when you toggle it off, you're hiding the layer and anything on it. So you can see there that both those images are on that layer. Okay, there's one other thing we need to do. It's good that they're on the layer now, but there's one other thing we should do, and that's uh, 
we should come into each of these, uh, we should come into our layer here and make it a reference layer so that we can't select these anymore. So if you come over here to this blank box, click on it once, everything disappears. Click on it a second time and the letter R appears here. So you should see VPR. And that R stands for reference and it makes this a reference layer. So if you have a look in here now, you can't click on these images anymore because Maya knows that these are uh, this is a reference layer. If you later on change your mind and decide you need to move those images, just click on that R again until it's gone and then you can select those images again. Okay, so that's the basic setup for our scene. Um, we need one more thing and then we can start modeling. And that thing we're going to start modeling with is a box. So come up here to your poly modeling tools. You might need to click the uh, tab up here to make sure it appears. Click on that and you'll get a box and it'll just appear there. And what we're going to do is we're going to start modeling this box to copy out the shape or trace out the shape of our dog object.